How's it going? Thought I'd do a little straw bale bed update for you. Just a bit of a quick look at how things are going out here. This bed here now has a trellis because our little honeypod peas are growing really well. Starting to throw their little tendrils around the wire down in there. Now these guys are an edible pod pea. You can eat the pod, the peas, the whole lot. Um, great fresh. Don't need to cook them. Fantastic. They're Bianca's favourite. So we're growing these guys out the front because we had uh, some nematode issues in the beds out the back and yeah, I just definitely want to get some of these off this year, save some seeds for next year and I figured why not experiment with the straw bale. So I think I've actually shown them before but they definitely put a bit of growth on and we're really happy with them. The potatoes down here in the little potato bed are doing rather well. We've got a couple that have grown up nicely. A um, couple of stunted looking ones over that side and some of the ones over here just didn't even make an appearance to the show. So not too worried about that though. Going to top up the bed with some more semi-composted horse manure and some more loosened hay over the top of it. And yeah, we'll see how they go. As you can see, we're getting the onion grass shoot through here. That's this stuff down in here. It's a bit of a pain in the butt really. Um, it's made me rethink my whole idea for gardens out the front here. If this stuff is going to grow up through the beds, it's pretty much well going to take over. The only way you can knock this stuff on the head that I've seen is glyphosate. Don't want to use it in the garden, so I'm thinking about doing, putting wicking beds through the whole front yard here. We'll just wait and see. There will be wicking beds going um, underneath that front fence eventually, so we may end up doing wicking beds here. We'll, we'll just wait and see. This bed over here, the Tigerella tomatoes are going all right. They're getting a bit of a blighty look on the leaves. These straw bale beds have been rather wet um, and damp. We've had a fair bit of rain here, more so than most winters, I think, or than I can remember. So there is a bit of a, a moisture issue with them. But, oops, just broke off a leaf. Uh, we've got some little Tigerella tomatoes starting. So you can sort of make out the little stripes on them. So thank you very much, Paul and Christy. We've we're definitely going to have at least some to save some seed from and they'll go into different beds later on but I, I think by the look of the flowers and I don't think the plants are that crook we'll definitely get a few off there for us to eat as well over here our little pita peppers are doing well they're putting on a little bit of growth and there's some little flower buds going in the crowns there so hopefully we might get some chilies from these guys during the winter I'm just pulling out some these are Cape gooseberries they're a bit of a weed they popped up from the um, worm cast that went in there, so them and tomatoes we get a fair bit of. Also planted out some red vein sorrel. That's just in there as well, just some seedlings I didn't know where to put out the back. Put them in a bale out the front here and they're doing really well. They're actually doing better out here than the ones out in the backyard. The garlic, we've actually lost three. We've lost one from there, one from there and one from over there. But the rest, while they're not looking as, as healthy as the ones out the back, they're growing. It's an experiment, we'll see how we go. Um, yeah, I know I'm gonna end up with some nice mulch down hay bales at the end, so I suppose that's one bonus, but even if we get tiny little garlic, it'll all be eaten, I suppose. Over here, in the brassica bale bed. I'll just take this off. In here, we're getting a couple of moths. I don't know if you can see them fluttering around there. They're actually coming out of the straw, the, the hay bale itself, so I think they're spending their life cycles in there. They're not eating the um, brassicas here at all, so I'm not worried about that. These guys seem pretty pest free. They're not being sprayed. This insect netting should do the job. Uh, up this end here, we've got some collies and we've got some little heads forming. Um, this one here, I think, has also got a little head forming down in there. They look a bit young to be getting heads on them, so I think we'll only end up with small ones. Probably something to do with the hay bales and just how they're being grown, I'm not too sure. The kohlrabi is getting a few little bulbs on it, so I'm pretty happy with them. I think they'll grow normally, and the broccoli should do fine. It's actually looking just as good as the stuff out the back. Maybe a little bit uh, smaller in size, but yeah, I'm not going to complain at all. I definitely think we're going to be getting some heads from them. So these beds here, all of these straw bale beds, are getting the water from the radial flow filter from the aquaponics. So that's where all the solids are collected in the system. So I'm using that to feed all these beds. It's nice and rich. That's why I think we've got such nice dark green looking leaves on these guys. And yeah, it's keeping them nice and healthy. Um, brassicas like nice firm roots. So I don't know whether that could be a bit of a problem with these guys and why they're starting to head up their cauliflowers while they're so small. Can't really complain. Put my netting down. Can't really complain about the way these guys are going. It's an experiment, like I said with the garlic. If, if they don't work well, I, you know, I haven't really lost anything because I've got a... A nice big 
mulch heap cooking away there that I'll be able to use on other garden beds. So, actually, while we're out here, have a bit of a look at the pigeon peas. The pigeon peas going rather well. I was out here before and I got a couple of um, shots of the mason bee uh, having a bit of a feed on the flower. And we've got some tiny little um, native bees. They're probably only about half a centimetre or five to six mil. What's that? About a quarter of an inch long. Really tiny little bee. And we've seen some blue banded bees and the European bees. We've seen all sorts on here. So I'm, <laughs> these guys have definitely been bringing them into the yard. We've got loads of pea pods on these pigeon peas as well. So I don't know whether we're going to try eating them, um, drying them out and eating them as a pulse like a chickpea or not. Uh, we'll see what happens with them. Um, some of the branches will be cut back and we will be using them as a mulch. But, I mean, they just look spectacular to me. Yellow flowers, and there's red flowers and there's variegated flowers over there. It's, it's just a nice sight, actually. The pod's green. Not too fond of eating the pod's green, so that's why we'll knock off a few and see what they taste like as they're dried. Underneath we've got tomatoes popping up everywhere uh, from the worm cast that went underneath all those plants. So we've got a whole heap of the broad ripple yellow currant. They're the little yellow cherries. We've got a whole heap of them there. So we're going to pick some of those for tonight's salad actually to go with some cannelloni and more sets of these guys. So we're pretty much all going to be sorted for salad tomatoes all the way through winter. Very impressed with that. Uh, just a quick look down in here. This pile down here is actually used to be our lawn clipping pile. It was where I put all the lawn clippings when I mowed the front lawn. And it's breaking down really nice. Um, have a bit of a dig around in here. It's, there's definitely not, oh there's a couple of worms. The worms are in there. It's definitely nowhere as grass as it used to be. There's actually some black soldier fly larvae in there too. Um, what happened was the black soldier fly larvae farm was um, flooded out earlier on in the year, so I actually buried it up the back there, the contents of it, it got rather odiferous and stank to high heaven. So I just buried it under the lawn clippings and I buried some um, some composted wood chips that, and um, leaves that wasn't looking too good. Uh, I put that up here, it got flooded out and went a little bit ana anaerobic in the base. And yeah, that's, that's what's basically done this. It's turned all this into beautiful nice compost so i think what's happened is some worms have come through and they're helping to break it down so that's pretty much for it a bit of a look at the uh, front garden the bale beds and the pigeon peas and the compost so if i add it in with the backyard garden walk arounds it just gets far too long so i'll post them both separately any comments questions suggestions just drop them in the comment section below and i'll get back to you other than that i hope you have a great one and take it easy catch ya from a pile of lawn clippings I think has come a long way and I'm very proud of it so there you go I love me compost <laughs>